G'day, I'm Ray Tomes from New Zealand. Welcome to another Science Saturday Summary, a program about cycles that uh, manifest in many things in our lives. Mostly I try to make uh, this talk something that's fairly topical. Um, today I'm going to talk about something that should be topical, uh, but is in fact uh, much older. Um, it's the work of Edward Dewey, Edward R. Dewey, who founded the Foundation for the Study of Cycles, it's a, case, it's a case for cycles, which he wrote in 1967. Um, and it, it presents the case for why uh, the rest of the world should be looking at cycles the way cycles researchers do. He, he opens this article by stating that he's indebted to Professor Richard P. Feynman, theori theoretical physicist of the California Institute of Technology at Pasadena, for the basic structure of the article. Professor Feynman once said to me, in regard to cycles, the proper scientific assumption to start with is that they are chance. If they cannot reasonably be chance, the next assumption should be that they are caused within the phenomenon or the system of which the phenomenon is an interacting part. Only if the cycles cannot be the result of chance or endogenous causes should we be undertake to postulate external or exogenous causes. This formula of Professor Feynman's has constituted the basic philosophy of the Foundation from that day to this. It is the framework around which the following paper has been built. This is one of my, my ter personal two favourite quotes um, that um, Dewey does in this paper. Insofar as cycles are meaningful, all science that has been developed in the absence of cyclic knowledge is inadequate and partial. Thus, if cyclic forces are real, any theory of economics or sociology or history or medicine or climatology that ignores non-chance rhythms is manifestly incomplete as medicine was before the discovery of germs. Now, that's quite a profound statement. Um, medicine before the discovery of germs was working in the dark. Uh, there were things going on that they didn't know about. There were these little tiny things that were so small we couldn't see them. Um, that we're having massive effects in our bodies and elsewhere. Um, and this is the same thing. Dewey's saying the same thing is happening uh, with the cyclic forces. Uh, because, uh, and I hope that you'll, at the end, will see that this is in fact a correct statement. Some of the things that uh, Dewey gave as um, reasons to believe there were um, real cycles and things was cycle dominance, which means that uh, various um, things have cycles in them that are, that are so clear to see uh, that there's a regularity going on. The regularity of timing is an important issue. If it's just wandering all over the place, it's just something that's wandering, not something that's doing cycles. The number of repetitions is an important aspect of the cycle. If we have many repetitions of something, uh, then we have a lot more confidence that this is something real that's happening that's continuing. The constancy of period. Uh, in some things, there are some things that uh, which um, people call cycles that Dewey wouldn't have uh, as cycles. So the business cycle, it's a fluctuation, but he didn't consider it a cycle because it had no regularity. There are other things that are in between that and the very regular things. Uh, for example, the sunspot cycle, we see um, it, it, it's definitely some sort of cycle, but it's not regular. Uh, it varies, so we've got a more complicated case there. Re-establishment of phase. This means that uh, if it, for some reason the cycle um, loses its um, coming on the clock beats, um, then it should come back to that again later uh, and, and re-establish that phase. Persistence through changed conditions. So that means that uh, um, when something happens, something dramatic happens, uh, like a war or a major depression, it may upset um, the nature of the cycle for a while, but, it, but it's, it's trying to persist and it keeps on coming back and coming back and carrying on. The persistence after discovery. So if we, um, if we report a cycle um, and then um, it doesn't do it anymore, uh, then it really wasn't a real thing. 
Um, if it's a real thing, it should keep on happening uh, pretty much as it was. An example of an especially dominant cycle. Um, this is an index of the Canadian lynx. It's um, data that's got by, uh, because of the trapping of the Canadian lynx for furs. As a vegan, I don't approve of that, but um, that's, um, that's nevertheless what was done. Start, these records start in 1735-36 and run through to the early 60s, um, because of course Dewey wrote this paper in the 60s. The average period of the cycle is 9.6 years. This timing is indicated by the rigid periodicity diagram by the thin broken line. So he's shown that all the way through, and you can see that the cycle sticks very much. Uh, the real data by the, by the solid line sticks very closely to the, to the dashed line in terms of timing. The dominance of the cycle, coupled with the number of repetitions and the irregularity, shows that this cycle cannot reasonably be the result of chance. We may therefore suppose that it is created by dynamic forces within the lynx population, or by a predator-prey relationship, or by some environmental force or forces. Uh, it's worth mentioning there that that's a log scale, and most of those troughs in the early part come down to around about 6,000 um, cases, uh, and most of the peaks go up to close to 60,000. So the population of the Canadian lynx is rising uh, by a factor of 10 um, in a period of about four or five years, then it, it, it drops back down again so that 9.6 years later, it's around about the same place and then it carries on. An example of a cycle that has continued unchanged through changed environmental conditions. This chart shows wrought iron prices in England from 1288 to 1908. Uh, so we've got 620 years uh, of, uh, of this cycle. It has the trend removed, and it's a diagram that shows, so it shows the fluctuations about the trend. And it has a perfectly regular 16 and two-thirds year cycle. There are many irregularities, but on the whole, areas of strength are followed by areas of weakness at about 16 and two-third year intervals. Note that after distortions, the previous pattern reasserts itself. So there are places where it does... Um, wander off a bit, um, but then it um, it reasserts and it comes keep on coming back over and over. You may say, well, this one doesn't look like a cycle to me. Well, there are a test for that, and a man named Bartel um, invented a test which allows us um, to take a data like that and to establish what's the chance that this is this is just a chance thing, and what's the probability that it's a real thing, um, and it can it can do that and. Uh, we quite often find cycles, um, uh, often the statistical test is set at 0 0.05 probability or 0 0.01 or something, or even 0 0.001 if we're trying to be very sure. Um, and we quite often find cycles that are even much better than that. An example of a cycle that reasserts, reasserts itself after distortion. This chart shows the yearly rate of change of pig iron production from January 1901 to December 1940, together with a diagram of the perfectly regular 41-month cycle. Note that after the distortion of 1919 and 1920 following World War I, the previous pattern reasserts itself. Similarly, after the distortions of 1932 and 33, which is the Great Depression, note that in spite of all distortions, randoms and other cycles are present in these figures. A majority of crests and troughs fall within three or four months, one way or the other, of the perfect timing, as shown by the small brackets. So that gives you the idea of how you're finding the cycles. But once a lot of cycles have been found, uh, Dewey made a chart that showed the um, distribution of cycle periods. And it was quite clear that it's, that it's not... Uh, they're not random. So not only within any one thing is it not random, it's got a cycle. The actual cycles, periods that are found are not random. There's many different things have a similar cycle period found in them, and he calls this identity of cycles periods. So um, sometimes they're obviously related things, and so that's not really a surprise. But on other occasions, um, they're totally unrelated things. So, for example, the Canadian lynx, 
there's also a thing called the Snowshoe Rabbit, and it's on the 9.6 year cycle as well. Well, Canadian lynx eats snowshoe rabbits, so it was considered to be a predator-prey cycle, um, and that would be a perfectly reasonable explanation. Apart from the fact that things like the rainfall in India, um, the um, uh, in, the, in the Atlantic, the uh, salmon and tent caterpillars in America and other things all around the world have the same period in them. Uh, we can't. We can say no. They're not all eating each other, and they're not all causing each other. They're unrelated things, and but they've got this identity of cycle period. When the when when a group of of things that have the, the same cycle period are studied together, we find there's a synchrony of cycle phase. So all of the different things uh, rise to a peak and uh, have a trough uh, in, together uh, with each other. This is a collection of all the things that have had been reported with 9.6 or 9 and 2 thirds years cycles have been found. And you can see um, there's a huge number of them. Um, there's uh, mammals, um, all sorts of different um, creatures there. Um, there's fish, there's birds, there's um, bugs, there's tree rings, um, there's um, wheat growth. Wheat acreage, climatology, different things in that, hydrology, medicine, sociology, and economics. So we find this, um, this wide ranging effect of the 9.6 nine year cycle or 9 and 2 thirds year cycle. Uh, this is showing one example of cycle synchrony. Uh, we see, see there. Uh, um, each dot represents one thing um, coming to its peak. You can, there's a whole bunch of stuff, marriages in St. Louis, Nile floods, sales of industrial company, immigration, sunspots, industrial stock prices, construction in Hamburg, real estate activity, sales of a public utility company, pig iron, loans and discounts, many industrial companies, residential building, panics, building construction, Java tree rings. So all these different things are, are rising, and each dot shows one of those. Uh, there's a little number by the dots, if you can see those, that says which of those things it refer to, and they're all coming, uh, the timing. We can see around 1962 there, uh, that they spread a year or two either side, um, which is about as accurately as we hope we can get those things in general. Um, and then uh, he shows the same thing in the previous cycle, which was 18.2 um, years earlier. So all these things are coming and moving together. And uh, as well as the identity of cycles periods and the synchrony of cycles, once all these identical periods are found and then uh, looked at individually, we find that there are families of cycles that are rela related by ratios of two and three. So in presenting this, Dewey uh, did, started from a 17.75 year period and then as he went up to the left, he multiplied by two and as he went down to the right, he divided by two. So we see 35.5 years, 71 years, 142 years and coming down 8.88, 4.44, 2.22, 1.11 years. And then he went up to the right, he multiplied by three to get 53.3 years, and he divided by three to get 5.92 years, 1.97 years, 0.66 years, and so on. And then in between we get ones, so for example, 2.96 years, if we divide by three and then by two, or we divide by two and then by three, we get to that. Now, uh, the majority of these periods are uh, common cycles that have been found in things. Not all of them. There's a, some of the upper right ones and, and uh, some one or two of the lower left ones are not found, but the rest of them have been found as common cycles periods and things. Now, um, I don't see anywhere that Dewey says that this is, the, this is in fact Pythagoras's lambda. Pythagoras um, did the, exactly the same structure as half of this, going one, one triangle of it, and uh, that was the basis that he said the frequencies of the notes and music followed. 
Um, and that was a, a new discovery at that time, as far as I know, that, that he actually had worked out what the frequencies were. That's, um, that was a, a great discovery by Pythagoras, but in fact it wasn't 100% correct. And Galileo's father um, showed that, that some of the ones, that there were some cases where um, he didn't have it quite correct. Now, I think that in doing this, it seems to me that, um, that Dewey ought to have been aware of um, that someone should have told him about Pythagoras' lambda, but he doesn't mention that. I guess he was trying to stay close to the cycle's knowledge and not bring other things in. But um, it's not necessarily correct that he stopped where he did. For example, if we take half of the 35 point, if we take a third of the 35.5 years, or double the 5.92 years, we get 11, about 11.84 years. Um, in that period, uh, there are cycles. Uh, for example, the Australian stock market has a cycle of that period. And the, uh, um, it's in fact very close to Jupiter's period around the sun. And many other things uh, follow that cycle as well. So it's hard to know where to stop that. Something's going on. You clearly don't go on forever in every direction. Otherwise, you'd have an infinite number of possible cycles and it would fit everything. Um, but that's not what's happening. But he, he, never, he never worked out why that was the case. This is some of those cycles that, that Dewey found there um, that he's presented. Uh, for exa you'll see a lot there, for example, 53.3 year theoretical period. Um, he's got a whole group of 54 year cycles there. Uh, it's, a lot of it's to do with prices. Um, from different places around the world, interest rates uh, and other things, Co general commerce. And then we can see the 35.5 year one. Um, that appears in the Canadian links also, as well as the 9.6 year. The 17.75 and so on down through those. Some of them have very many things that have been found in them. At the bottom right, he's changed from uh, years to months. So the um, nearly 36 months one is the nearly three year cycle. Uh, and then there's a nearly two year cycle, the nearly 18 months. Uh, we've got the nearly one year as well as a 1.1 year cycle there. Uh, and so on down. And um, in particular, it's worth mentioning the eight month cycle and the four month cycle, because those ones were very, very common ones that were found. Um, 0.66 year and 0.33 year in his table. So uh, each of these things generally has multiple things, and this is only um, some of the ones that Dewey found. But it's fair to say that there were several cycles that he found that didn't fit this table. And one of them was a, um, that is the 9.6 year that the Canadian links moves on, um, and it's not in the proportions that are found in that table. It doesn't appear there. Now, the other, another one he called the 40-month cycle, and it was established um, by the foundation that it, it was 40.68 months, or we can say 3.390 years, uh, and that's one of the most widely reported uh, cycles around. Now, part of the reason it's the most widely supported uh, found is that it's in the um, American stock market. Um, and a lot of people study the American stock market for cycles. So those two don't fit into this table, and yet they're very common cycles. So not everything fits this, but a big proportion of cycles do. Unknown environmental forces. Dewey says the real, um, really important aspect of comparative cycle study is the possibility that it will lead to discovery of hitherto unknown environmental forces that affect life, weather, and many other terrestrial phenomena. We have seen that many of the rhythms that have been observed in the phenomena around us cannot reasonably be the result of chance. We have seen that many of these non-chance rhythms cannot be the result of dynamic feedback or predator prey situations. A few of the rhythms, but not many, may be the result of interphenomenal relationships. However, this situation raises the question of the origin of the rhythm in the primary phenomenon. This leaves us with a very large percentage of the non-chance rhythms as necessarily caused by unknown external forces. I like, I like Dewey's language here, unknown external forces. Uh, it's, um, 
it's not, it's, he doesn't get mystical. Uh, he was a practical man and he was trying to find what's going on and quite clearly something was going on um, and so he just labels it unknown. Here we come to grips with the central problem of cycle study. What could these external forces be? Unfortunately, we do not yet know, but it seems clear that they are something. If such forces are real, as we said in the beginning, it's a matter of the utmost importance to mankind. The proof of the existence of such forces will push back the frontiers of knowledge as much as any single discovery that I can think of. It will greatly expand man's powers of prediction in both the natural and social sciences. It will make possible a revision and improvement of much of historical, economic and other thinking and theories. It will demonstrate much greater unity and interrelationship of natural and social phenomena than has previously been imagined. It will have important philosophical implications. I have presented only a small fraction of the evidence, but I trust it is enough to prove that further exploration in this field is a must. Um, I like the bit there where he says it will demonstrate greater unity and interrelationship of natural and social phenomena. Um, today, uh, one thing that we do have a lot of, um, we, I would call it uh, new age thinking. There's a lot of people that are talking about the relationships of many things to each other, how um, everything has a every cause has an effect on every other thing and so on. Uh, some on things more than others, but that there is something going on between people, between uh, parts of nature, um, between parts of the universe and so on. Dewey did include some examples that came from beyond the earth um, to show that some of these same cycles appeared in other things. And since then, much work, more work has been done on that uh, and it's been found that there are uh, many cycles that um, are, are present on Earth, are present also beyond the Earth. So we can say for sure, whatever these forces are, um, they are, they are things that are moving around the universe and coming to the Earth. In his paper, Dewey also mentioned the um, a case where he said, imagine that a man from Mars came to visit uh, Earth. Um, they were obviously very clever because they'd had space travel and they managed to get here but they didn't know about radio waves. And so um, they were quite intrigued when we turned on a radio and we'd moved the dial to somewhere. This is, remember, we're talking about the 1960s. You didn't um, have push buttons. You'd move the dial to the thing that you wanted to listen to. And uh, we picked up the sound of someone's voice speaking. We then demonstrated to the Mars Martian that another radio somewhere else turned to the same part of the dial would pick up the same voice talking. So something was going on. But if we move them both to a different part of the dial, we could pick up, both of them could pick up a different voice there. And he uses an example to explain, um, we, we're, we're quite happy with um, the idea of radio waves, but the radio waves are actually no different to these cyclic forces. Um, we can, when we, by twiddling the dial, we get different um, things that are affected by it. Um, and uh, it's really something we can't see. We just call it radio because we know what it is. We can call these forces something as well. And then we can say, yes, we know what they are. We don't really know what they are. Um, we, have a, we have a theory that says these waves are that sort of thing. And it may well be that the waves that do this are in fact um, electromagnetic waves like, uh, like the radio waves, but they're not in the same range. They might be especially long, waves or especially short ones or a combination of those. Um, that's my view that those do pen penetrate through the whole universe um, and they do show up in all sorts of things. Uh, in astronomy there's many examples um, uh, that and they link up to ones in geology and other things. These are subjects for another day. So I hope you've enjoyed this um, talk. It's, it's different to the other ones I've been given, uh, aren't they all? Um, but this one is, it's, it, we're at a time where Dewey's vision and Dewey's, um, uh, what he's left us, this wonderful uh, thing, and not just Dewey, but many other people that helped him in doing this, but he was the leader of it. It's coming back uh, again and the 
foundation for the study of cycles is strongly re-established again after having um, some um, faltering over a several decades, number of decades. And uh, so uh, we will, you will hear more things about this coming up. But I think it's important to, uh, to re-establish Dewey's knowledge. I've tried to put stuff in, um, in Wikipedia at times, and some of it, I've had huge battles trying to put stuff in there because um, hordes of um, young people that have come out of university and not been told about these things say, that's not right, I never heard about that in university, and they go and they want to delete all this stuff because they don't know about it. Uh, they don't realise that they have not got the sum total of all knowledge. So we need to get this knowledge uh, taught to people in universities. We need to get it established as common knowledge that these things are going on. Um, it's, it, it could be in schools even. There's nothing that too intricate. It doesn't depend on huge amounts of other stuff. Um, it depends on some other things, but it can be established at some level. If people had a general common knowledge of this, they would look at the world a little differently. And that's what Dewey has seen, that uh, this can greatly change the way we look at the world. It's quite clear that, that whatever these forces are, that they're penetrating through everything and that they can um, give us a different way of seeing the relationships of things. And uh, I mentioned like the New Age people have um, begun to see things that way quite a lot and they, um, and they get a lot of things right, but they don't always get everything right. And so the scientific people um, criticize them um, for not having everything right. But what they, the scientific people don't realize is that the other ones are criticizing them for being too stuck in the mud. Um, and there's truth on both sides. Um, I've tried to have a sort of a foot in each camp. Um, I'm primarily a scientific person, but I see that the New Age people have got some things that they see that the scientific people don't. And sometimes when I work out a bit of new science, I realize that the New Age people have been there ahead. So we should listen to all of these ones. We should listen to the people who are a bit ahead, but they not, don't see it so clearly because it isn't clear yet. Uh, but we should listen to them and we should see that uh, that there's some possibility here and we should investigate that. And at the same time, the New Age people need to listen to the scientists to say, we have to establish it clearly if we're going to believe it. We can't teach everything, something to everybody if it's a bit woolly. Um, and I do see that happens a lot. Like modern astrology, for example, um, is is full of low of stuff that's not right. Uh, there is some real astrology. Uh, Gokulin established that, but uh, it's um, it's not everything. Most of the things they say are not true, even though there's grains of truth in it. So uh, we need to do that combination of things: one foot in each camp, one foot in the camp of establishing it solidly, one foot in the camp of let's see what's out there and get a bit of a feeling for it. Okay, this has been longer than the other talks um, and it's possible that uh, this there may be a pause in these talks that I'm doing because I want to work on uh, writing up some other work I've done uh, which will appear in a forthcoming issue of the Cycles magazine. So I'm going to concentrate on that for the next uh, month or two. So for now, um, this will be the last Science Saturday summary unless someone else comes forward and does someone for a little while. It's not the end, um, it's a pause. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, I hope you'll keep an eye out for these things that related to Dewey um, and the, what the Foundation is doing now and um, bringing back the knowledge of Dewey and extending it beyond that. Be happy.